Go. Hello, I'm Bev Cotton from Sustainable Skibbereen, an environmental group of different groups around Skib, and we've got the pleasure today of interviewing Alicia O'Sullivan from Skibbereen, and uh, from from the interview you'll hear all the uh, amazing things that she's been doing. Hi Alicia. Hello, how are you? <laughs> Very good, thanks. Good. So, um, so a brief intro. This inspiring 18-year-old student says that climate change is the most pressing issue of her generation, a generation afraid of the future. She's currently, amongst other things, the um, Ocean Wealth uh, Conference Ambassador for Ireland, and she's also been to the Oceans World Conference. So, Alicia, can I just ask you about that first? Yeah, so the conference was in June 2019. Um, it was a it was for small island nations around the world and to show Ireland's, I suppose, um, connection with them because we're ourselves a small island nation. Um, Antonishta Simon Coveney was there and former US Secretary of State John Kerry. Um, and I suppose it was really talking about the true impacts of climate change, um, how it's impacting the people who are doing the least the most and how Ireland really needs to step up in terms of our own climate action, um, in terms of, um, I suppose, achieving the Paris Agreement go um, aims and goals, and as well, I suppose, helping the smaller island nations who are really being hit very hard um, and the people that are being affected and families. Okay, thanks so much, yeah. And um, a bit, uh, you've also been involved in the Friday for Future group. Could you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, so I suppose a lot of young people, um, as we know, are were very inspired by Greta Thunberg and everything she's doing with the movement. Um, on March fifteenth, I took part in the global, the first global youth strike, um, and the rally in Cork as well. Uh, it was it was an incredible day. There was over five thousand young people outside City Hall, um, who were you know very passionate about the issue and. Um, we're still learning about climate change and the impacts it has, our own behaviour and our own country's behaviour and I suppose what that does to other people and other countries. Um, but I think the movement is a real stepping forward to educating people and creating awareness um, about what's really happening um, and the effects of that and that's a really important thing that we have now and a really good format for young people to be able to use their voice to create all of those changes. So yeah, I really am a big believer in the strikes and um, I think they're going to move us forward to hopefully where we need to be by 2050. Okay, thanks so much. Yeah, oh, that's really interesting. And a bit closer to home, uh, West Cork has had its own campaigns. And I know you, you've been part of them and supported them. So could you just tell us a little bit about how SOS, the Save Our Skibbereen fight against the plastics factory um, at Poundlick has been going? What's the latest news there? Yeah, so um, in July, um, I went on holidays and just before I left, it was looking pretty bad in terms of the Save Our Skibbereen campaign. And um, it was it was really quite an unfortunate um, situation. And when I came back, it, the actually the license had been quashed. Um, and it was a real success for Skibreen and it was, you know, it's a small community and the amount of money that had been raised to bring this issue to court and to keep on fighting it. And I think the Saver Skibreen uh, people, Brendan McCarthy and Brendan McCormack and everyone involved were like extraordinary figures in not only Skibreen, but in West Cork and in Ireland and showing that there actually can be amazing results from fighting the system and fighting and taking these things to court. Um, and bringing the community together actually to create a safer environment for everyone. Yeah, no, it's brilliant. Yeah. And um, and the other local issue, of course, is the one about the kelp, um, a, an issue to stop the kelp farming in Bantry Bay. Uh, how, how's that going? Yeah, so um, the Protect Our Kelp campaign has been a very long-winded one, very complicated one, because because it is offshore and not so much on land in terms of the Save Our Skibbereen campaign. It's been a much longer uh, procedure for them. And Dolphin Thomas have been, again, amazing figures in, in leading that campaign. And again, bringing the awareness and education to everyone and again, bringing it to court. It's a, it's a long, hard pro process, uh, which takes a lot of financial support and they've done it. And 
it's still ongoing but the license was found to be incompleted um, which now obviously the the people are fighting against um, but it's it, in terms of now it's it's quite a good position to be in uh, and we have more time to develop I suppose um, more protection uh, for the kelp and create more awareness um, in, in towards the community about the campaign um, so hopefully now we will be successful in that as well great yeah let's hope so and uh, really just a piece of information but uh, fantastic that um, you and Greta Thunberg who I'm sure everyone has heard of who's another uh, campaigner still at school uh, were complimented by John Kerry the 68th US Secretary of State and in a recent speech he acknowledged the work that you're both doing that you know at least great to have that acknowledgement how did you feel about that yeah I mean it is nice to get acknowledgement but uh, I think it's not like Greta's always talking about you know the acknowledgement she gets and people saying oh um you're such an inspiring young person but like that's not what we want we don't want you know to be patronized or to be credited we just want to see i suppose action taken out of what we're doing and in terms of having a strike the result would be for action to be taken not for acknowledgement of the strike you know yeah. i mean if we were any other age i think that's the way it would work so i think i I'm, i mean obviously i'm appreciative and i'm glad that we're leaders and, and people like john Kerry are listening but i suppose listening isn't really enough in terms of climate change so yeah yeah it's not actually action Okay, and you know, I mean, people are in a way beginning to look at younger people as uh, a source of hope and inspiration. It's happening anyway, which is great. And just taking you back, because I know that you've been involved in environmental concerns, you know, way, way back even at national school. So could you could you tell us in a way how how you got going and what your what your experience at school yeah, was? Yeah, so when I was in second class, uh, green school started in my school and. I was really keen to be involved. Now, obviously, that was just something I was passionate about at the time, and um, we were really involved in it. Obviously, it was just our school community, and we got two flags, and you know, we just learned really basic things about the environment, climate change. Like those words weren't really thrown around or spoken about, but we learned about the greenhouse effect, and we were teaching um, the younger classes when we moved up um, a song about the greenhouse effect. And it was really just basic stuff, but I think that really um, started to develop my consciousness of it. And then obviously when Greta's movement began, it kind of reinstated everything I'd learned. And then when you learn the effects of what's happening now, it's it's really that consciousness and the education that, that kind of formed, my, I suppose, my whole, um, my whole motivation to keep fighting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, great. And uh, moving on a bit to 2017, you joined uh, Cork County Corlan Nanog and you've been an advocate for them. So could you tell us a little bit about, about that? Yeah, so Corlan Nanog is one of 31 new councils all over Ireland. Um, so obviously I'm in Cork County. Um, so the year I joined, they were in their second term of working on sexual education um, and we worked with the NCCA on the reform of that in Ireland because it was 20 years old. And then I was appointed the national executive for Cork County, so basically just a national executive made out of made up of one person from every one of the Corlas, so thirty one young people, and we were working on equality within schools, which was voted on by around five hundred young people at the Dáil and Oak event in in twenty seventeen. So we've been working on that for for two years. Okay, and another organisation you've been involved in is Equality Within Schools. And so again, could you say, you know, what, yeah. what, where that's going? So that was the, yeah, so the campaign was equality within schools for the national executive. So we worked on, we found the two biggest issues in the equality within schools, which was individuality or, or lack of. And um, I suppose student voice was another big issue. So we actually launched a campaign a few weeks ago called uh, hashtag teach me as me, which is an online campaign for young people to talk about I suppose the good things that their school does in terms of individuality whether it's allowing uh, boys and girls to wear trousers or skirts or letting a uh, various subject choice for anyone or uh, multiple of very varied of things um, and to show the positive so other schools can take inspiration from it or maybe incorporate in theirs and then the student voice were actually working on a website and um, kind of I suppose like a, a booklet on how to incorporate student voice uh, deeper into into the school society and culture um, and that's going to be launched later in December in the year. Okay 
again, fantastic. And uh, <laughs> moving on, uh, you were also involved in the Erasmus project, Changing Minds, with a trip to Romania and the Aurelia Trust. So again, what's what's that about? Yeah, so the school was a partner um, in the this Erasmus project, and the Aurelia Trust is a charity that works with um, orf- orphans in poor in poor parts of Romania with disabilities, both mental and physical. So I suppose the opportunity came up to apply, and obviously I was r- so interested in social issues during my fourth year that I just thought it was a great opportunity, and we worked on, I suppose, breaking the stereotype of um, the Roma community in Ireland, and then in Romania people with disabilities are often seen as I suppose second class citizens because of um, like because of the history that happened the Ceausescu regime in Romania so we worked um, on I suppose educating people here in Ireland on the Ceausescu regime and what was happening in Romania and we also worked in Romania with young people from there so they came and saw the orphanages with us and I suppose learnt and accepted a bit of their history as well um, that was quite dark and I suppose the experience of working with people with such disabilities um, was a real I suppose it matures you fast and and helps you to understand um, like a, a whole history that can cause so much pain um, so it was, it was a very good opportunity and I actually went back and volunteered this year as well so okay. it's, yeah so it was back really again. yeah, yeah. <laughs> brilliant and um, again, you know, locally, I know you've been supported by the Lions Club in Skibbereen, but you're also the Lions Club Youth Ambassador for Ireland. You won that award for 2019, and particularly for your own project, Generation Z. So what, what's that about? Yeah, so I was nominated for the Lions Club Youth Ambassador, um, and I basically developed my project called Gen Z, Generation Z. Um, and it's basically a project which aims to, I suppose, help parents to understand um, our generation in terms of mental health, LGBTI, um, cyber security, social media, climate change, all of these aspects that have major influence on our minds and in, in our lives play a huge role now. Um, so I suppose the, the idea was to create an event that was a safe space for parents to be open and honest and not so much politically correct about everything and to understand what they knew, what they didn't know and I suppose to give them the platform to to educate themselves and to also ask questions and feel comfortable that, you know, that it's a whole generational gap, um, I suppose, problem. It's not just them. Um, so we created events and now we actually have funding for three events with Healthy Ireland for March 2020. So they're going to happen in the West Cork area um, or in the Cork area even. And um, hopefully I'll be able to progress it more online with a website um, so that we can have like an engaging forum for parents to kind of look back on all the events and everything happening as well. Okay, yeah. And look, since we're on that, you know, it's very interesting, I think, all around to say, you know, what what is there a gap between the generations? Your generation is looking at our generation and thinking, you know, what have we done? And we're wondering what you're up to. Do you, do you think that there is a, a huge difference in perception or is it the same? And how do you find your own generation? Yeah. Uh, I think there's it's it's both sides of, of the of the um the pavement, shall we say? Yeah. But I think the biggest issue is that when you look at really serious problems like young people not talking about mental health or young people not being able to count as gay at home or you know young people having uh, climate anxiety or, or stress because they're worried about climate change and for their future and these are real problems that young people are facing and then if they can't talk about it, that, at, that at home and that's not because they fear that they might be you know they might not be listened to it's because they fear the parents might not understand them now in some aspects it might be true and in other times it might not be but for parents to maybe begin that conversation or for young people to know that they know about it um i think will definitely open up that divide a lot more so that like you the, everyone's on the same page of understanding as to what mental health is and that has a big inf- that has come from my own parents generation from you know different aspects so like culture and society and I suppose the Catholic Church playing a huge role in terms of government ruling and that's all changed drastically now so that there's been a massive change in in society as we uh, you know as such um in the last 20 30 years so i think that's where that divide has come from and it's it's no harm in everyone kind of seeing how the other generation's environment was when they grew up and obviously you now with like technology and social media and like cyber and everything it's it's another aspect to that that's been added on and kind of 
revved up everything about like 100 degrees so in terms of it's it's kind of, it, i think there's a big gap um but I think, again it's on both sides um and hopefully that the events will be a platform for parents to kind of have the conversation with other parents about what's going on in their kids lives and um hopefully that will develop into better communication for both yeah, no, it sounds great. <laughs> and thinking too of your experience, I mean, you've been involved in many groups, you know, with your own generation and, and many national groups and locally. Do you think that your generation is coming through with, with you know, it wouldn't just be one voice, but, you know, with a kind of coherent feeling of where things are going or what it's about? Or is part, is part of the work even just talking amongst yourselves and wondering what you make of it all? Yeah, I think... Um I think there is a, definitely like a unification and mobilisation of young people, especially obviously with the climate change movement and young people are so involved in organisations now and Youth Voice is such a big part of um, every kind of company or business or organisation that and school, it's all being incorporated and young people are really stepping up and I suppose in terms of showing that they can do that, you know, we are showing that we can sit at the table and, and help and make the changes and I think that connection definitely needs to be made in terms of, of you know, young people you know we have a voice and it's our future as well everything that's ruled in this country is going to affect us probably more so than anyone else um because we'll be here longer and it's just it's just uh that young people need the space at the table and there's a there is a great lot of people realizing that now which is a really good situation for us to be in but also it needs to be pushed forward and um needs to be taken more seriously in in my opinion yeah okay thanks and just homing down here you've mentioned sexual education and mental health and i know that you're involved too with uh, concerns about lgbtqi and you know just just uh, more tolerance or understanding of different sexualities so do you, do you want to say a bit about that too yeah so i guess um again like when you look at the the change changes that Ireland have overcome in the last 20 years it's like a big change from like the Catholic Church basically ruling everything to you know gay marriage being legal and abortion being legal in in some respect so it's a it's a big change in a such a sh short distance of time and the power of social media has greatly influenced all of these changes as well and in terms of being more open I think again it's understanding different people that live and how they live and really I suppose seeing it from your own point of view whether it was your son or daughter that was gay you know how would you treat them and if the answer isn't good like why is it like that like why do you feel it should be like that you know everyone is their own person and um, I think just we all just need to respect each other really and uh, I suppose in terms of again the Gen Z is hopefully opening up that link um, in terms of the last 20 years yeah great so we've talked a lot about you know what you've done and what you've been involved in and kind of you know uh, touched on some of the problems so what do, you, what do you think the answers are what are the what are the solutions what what could we all be thinking about doing yeah so i think individually um i think i get asked this question so much like what what can i do my impact isn't going to have any real impact when there's you know places like china and america having the greatest carbon emissions but we all need to start somewhere and there needs to be a leader in this and countries are continuously copying each other people are always copying each other you know if your friend gets a new car you want a new car so if you're going to start becoming living more sustainably so if you're you know uh, taking public transport more which is quite difficult again when you live rurally or um you know sharing spins with people to school or to work or you know bringing your eco cup and bringing your um reusable bottle and you know buying less fast fashion and trying to buy more organically and locally and then in terms of the community it's i suppose trying to get all those aspects and trying to make them more accessible for people and i suppose in terms of um like the po people always talk about the poverty line and trying to make this more financially able for people to do it as well um obviously yeah, we have the carbon tax which is regressive and again people in communities need to support each other in that and then in terms of i suppose in a country level we need to change the system basically that's what fridays for future is trying to do that's what extinction rebellion is trying to do we can't all live sustainably right now and that's because of the system we live in and to do that to change that we need 
uh, we need the government to take control and change the legislation that controls everything and we need to fight to have uh, to not just be hitting individuals with carbon tax but to be hitting the businesses and the organizations and I suppose things like aviation and it's it's really um, it's really a a local as global issue you know we need to fight everything here uh, to create I suppose the changes up in Dublin or you know in different places of the world as well and we all have a responsibility to do that again like places like the Marshall Islands are mere two meters above sea level like their homes are going to be gone basically in in 10 years time and the realities are that we're not even being uh, we're not even witnessing the real uh, effects of climate change right now and that that gives us this sense that it's way off in the future and that oh if I um, you know throw this in my garden like it's not going to make a difference but yeah not to you right now but there's people where it is affecting them and it's not just again it's not just individuals it's big corporations like I said it's system change so I think if you want to make a difference join one of these organizations get educated on it and I suppose take action and again like fight for the future of of the planet and for people on the planet yeah okay no that's tremendous um is there anything you want to add we've covered a lot of ground we've, we've done it all I yeah mean, it was good <laughs> no it's great and look just on a personal note um you know fantastic thanks for taking time to be interviewed okay. by sustainable skibbereen and uh, we understand you're, you're hoping to go on to university and study law hopefully next year if the points are uh are achieved <laughs> yeah. okay well look we, we, so. wish you, we wish you really well with that thanks thanks, thanks so much Alicia. Thanks. yeah